So I have some railroad spikes that are sitting in the shop. Of course I'm going to try and make some knives out of them. Um, now if you've watched many YouTube videos on this, you've probably already heard that railroad spikes really don't make great knives. They're adequate. They kind of harden up some, but they don't make, like, by modern standards, a good knife. And when I say by modern standards, I mean that in the last 80 or 90 years, steels have been quantified and known chemistries, and smiths now can buy a steel and know exactly what it is and how it heat treats. Whereas 100 years ago or so, when my great-grandfather had a blacksmith shop, he didn't know what a steel was without testing it. Um, and by those standards of those times, the railroad spikes are probably an acceptable steel for most everyday type knives. But by modern standards, they're inadequate. But why do people actually make these? It's because they're interesting. You can tell it was recycled from a spike. You can tell this spike, this was something else that was hammered out into a knife. And that adds a lot of character and interest. And really, as a hobbyist, that's all I'm really actually concerned about and why I make whatever I make. is that I'm not trying to make a great knife to sell. I'm not trying to manufacture things. Uh, I'm just trying to make something that I find interesting. Now this blade was shaping out pretty nicely here, and I should have probably stopped a little earlier than I did. Probably about at this point I really liked the shape of it. But then I went a little too far trying to straighten out uh, the tapers on the where the blade met the handle and trying to bend the handle to put a curve in it. And I came up with a shape that looked okay at the time, but I didn't like it as much whenever I finished this. I liked what I was seeing as I was editing the video just before that. So in the future I may stop a little earlier on these forgings to come up with something that's not quite as complex a shape. I just quench it in water. It's not got enough carbon for that to be an issue. Uh, you may not even be able to get one to harden up by quenching it in oil. And I, I tested it with a file. It's kind of hard, kind of not. Um, I tested it with some actual uh, testing files, and it came out in about the upper 40s, low 50s range of hardness, right around 50 Rockwell C. And I'm just going to take it over to the belt um, grinder, 36 grit belt, 120 grit belt, 240, and then a Scotch Bright belt. And just clean everything up a little bit, take out any obvious lumps and bumps. But I didn't really want to have it totally finished up. I wanted it to stay rough. And the higher the grit belt, the more you have to keep the knife cool. Uh, dip it in water quite a bit. And then to add some interest to the whole project, I decided I was going to wrap the handle in leather. So I took a side of leather that I have and an Australian strander, which is the tool I'm using here, and I cut myself some lace that's about a quarter inch wide. And I'm going to use that to tie a gaucho knot for the handle. I've got another video already of how to tie a gaucho knot, so I just sort of sped through this one. But once I've got the lace cut and prepared, beveling the edges and then I uh, used uh, it's olive oil and beeswax is what I'm currently using to condition lace that I'm braiding with because I have it laying around um, but then I'll just start uh, I'm gonna build up the handle a little bit with a piece of leather because I decided that the square handle wasn't very comfortable even wrapped so I wanted to make it a little bit more rectangular and so I cut a piece of leather that I can glue onto the front and I beveled that piece of leather to where that the handle would um, taper a little bit on the belly of it as well. 
and I'll just glue that onto it once I've got it all cut and shaped. Skive each end so that there are no lumps or bumps. This is why I meant about uh, beveling the edges. I'm gonna use a French edge skiver. And then it's gonna be more of a domed shape than flat square corners. Once I got it fitted in place, it's just a little bit of contact cement on both pieces uh, on the back of the leather and then on the metal of the handle. And once that's had a chance to dry and set up a little bit, which will be a few minutes later, I'll go ahead and take and then stick that piece of leather on there and that'll hold well enough for when I get the knot over top of it. Now obviously if you were using something to build up a handle you probably want some sort of mechanical connection to it um, if you're just using a piece of wood or something like that to build up one of these handles you want to set pins and epoxy and all that but I'm going to be wrapping over with a knot that's tied all the way around it with the leather and completely covers it so it should hold just fine and again for a railroad spike knife it doesn't need to be perfect and excellent because it's not going to be a perfect and excellent knife to start with As I said, we're going more for interesting. Now, like I said, I've covered gaucho knots before in another video, and I can probably put a link for that. But basically, you wrap, depending on how many times you want to make the knot, you wrap up around the handle. I think I went three times around this time. And you wrap back down to the spike end again and make X's over top of those. Then I wrapped back up to the blade. Right next to my previous line of lace. And as I started to go back down, I start using the needle to actually go under a strand and over a strand every time I encounter one of those um, places where I'm crossing strands next to one of those X's. And you'll just keep doing that. You go all the way down to the spike end back up to the handle, doing um, under one, over one, strand, and then you'll go back down to the spike end again, going um, over one, under one, over one strand, when you start going over three strands, and back up to the blade, the same thing. Uh, over one, under one, over one. And then finally, you'll go back down to the spike end and you'll have four strands you're crossing. And that means you go under one, over one, under one, over one on each of those times you cross four strands. And you'll come up with a knot that looks like, um, like a round braid. It'll look like an eight strand round braid or so is what it'll come out looking like.
And the final step after you've got it all tied up will be to go through and um, smooth the lace down, um, even it out by dressing up the knot, pulling lace here and there to settle it in and tighten it up in places where it's too loose or loosen it up some to move it around a little bit just to make everything a little bit prettier and neater. And then you'll go and take and you can either roll it or in this case since it's an odd shape on this handle I went ahead and just pounded it with a cobbler's uh, hand to set the lace and make it smoother in the hand. forge out to make a knife because when you grab onto a railroad spike you're like okay that much of it has to be handle you only really have about two inches or so at the end that you can make into the actual blade and you stretch that out and it really does make a pretty good sized blade I made about a four inch blade out of that two inches it tapers out it's kind of shiny it's definitely sharp it is a railroad spike so it may not be that it'll hold that edge uh, when I tested it with the files it was only I don't know, 45 to 50 Rockwell, but it does have a good sharp edge. It'll cut leather, it'll skive leather. Those are my requirements for a sharp knife. It's not the best knife in the world because it's a railroad spot, but It'll be a good knife for what it is. And